Hey friends, it's Mel and welcome to my kitchen. I'm glad you're here tonight if you are looking for some quick, easy, budget-friendly ways to feed your family, you have come to the right place. I'm working out of my pantry and my freezer, some leftovers, and I've got a bonus snowy morning breakfast for you. So just sit back, relax, grab you a hot chocolate. It snowed in East Tennessee, and let me do the cooking. The first night of the week, I did a Mexican leftover makeover. I just had about three or four random ingredients left over from taco night, and I just decided to throw it together into a little casserole type deal. I've got probably about half a pound of some taco meat that I pulled out of the refrigerator. I'm just going to bring that up to heat in a skillet on top of the stove. I'm going to throw in a little bit of onion and a couple of spoonfuls of some of this canned queso blanco cheese. Just going to begin to let that get melted down and stirred in a little bit. Then I've just got some regular jarred taco sauce that I'm going to stir into this, give it a little bit more flavor. And once again, just going to stir that all in together and get it all warmed up and combined. Now I have just taken like an 8 by 8 baking dish and sprayed it and I had just maybe 6 or 8 corn tortillas and I thought I would just make like a little lasagna deal out of it. So I'm just lining the bottom of this casserole dish with these corn tortillas. I did warm them just a little bit before and then I had some leftover refried beans and I also just got them warmed up in the microwave and I'm going to spread a layer of those on top of the corn tortillas then I'm going to put about half of that taco meat mixture. Of course, it's not a Mexican dish without some cheese, so I'm going to put a layer of cheese on top of that. Then I'm just going to make another layer. And in this dish tonight, I used up three different leftovers that I had. I had almost a whole can of refried beans, probably a half a pound of taco meat, and like I said, six or eight corn tortillas. So this is just something I threw together on the fly to get those ingredients used up. And I just put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. I like to keep this Mexican rice on hand and nothing special about this, but my family likes it. So anytime we have Mexican, I try to pull that out for them. This was a great dish to use up some leftovers and not let that food go to waste. That is one of the things that we need to be focusing on is, you know, not wasting food. We should always be thinking about it. But even more so right now, I think it's come to people's attention. You may not always get everything you want at the grocery store. It may not be there. Or if it is, it is a whole lot more expensive. So making use of what we have is something that I am trying to do better about myself. And I felt like this was a very accomplished night. Also, another thing is that if we use things like rice and like the corn tortilla chips and those things to be a filler in a meal, we can make our food stretch a little bit further. And portion sizes. And I'm talking to myself here. We've sort of gotten out of control with portion sizes here in the U.S. So those are just a few tips. I have some non bread that I'm going to make pizzas out of. The first thing that I'm going to start with is cutting up and prepping some of the toppings because these pizzas are so fast. 
you need to have all this done beforehand because <laughs> they are going to be done in no time. I've got two packages of non bread that I got and I have just put it in my freezer when I got it on sale. Set it out on the counter and let it thaw out. Now I like to pre-bake my crust about four minutes. I just forgot the temperature but I'll put it on the screen for you and I will also have links for anything that I can find down in the description box. But anyway, I pre-bake them for about four minutes before I build the pizzas. And I'm going to make one a barbecue pulled pork pizza and the other one is going to be more of a traditional pizza. This is just a new barbecue sauce that my husband got that I'm spreading on one of them. And this is a pizza sauce that I had on hand that I'm using on the other one. On top of the sauces, I'm going to bring in some mozzarella cheese and put that on. And then on the barbecue pizza, I'm going to be using some pulled pork that my husband made on his smoker. Y'all know the deal he got on this smoker for $99. And he has used it uh, one time on the weekend there. And he did a pork butt and some ribs. And he didn't want me to film it because that was his first time using it. But he was like a pro. I think I shared some pictures of it on Instagram and maybe on my community tab, but it was delicious. And this was the almost the end actually of the pork butt. And I used it on the pizza, and we had just a little bit left. And I put it in a bag and froze it because I can pull it out anytime and use it in a taco or on one of these pizzas or something like that. So use those leftovers, save them, freeze them, and pull them back out. Now you saw me put pepperonis on the other pizza and then I'm coming back in with a little bit of red onion. Now this one red onion, I got so much use out of this week. I did not have to go to the store any this week. The only thing that I went and got was this red onion and a bag of salad because I wanted it. <laughs> so I put just a little bit more cheese on after I get the toppings on than on the Italian style one I put some Italian seasonings and then I use this like barbecue seasoning on the pork barbecue put those back in the oven for another four or five minutes and look how beautiful they are just enough to let that cheese get melted down into the toppings so yummy and I had a little bit of green onion left over so I chopped up some of that and put that on the top of these. Not only are these non-bread pizzas delicious, they are a great way to use up any leftovers. If you had some breakfast sausage that was left over, throw it on a non-bread pizza. Taco meat would be beautiful if I hadn't already made that casserole. Throw a salad together on the side. This was a nutritious and delicious meal. Now we're going to the pantry for a very, very old favorite of ours. This is my Aunt Kathy's cowboy beans. You may have seen me make this before on my channel, but this is definitely a go-to favorite. I use it as a main dish or a side. You start by browning up one pound of hamburger meat. I have drained the grease off this, and now I'm adding in some onion. While I have that going on, I'm going to start on the bean part. And I use a 28 ounce can of pork and beans here. If you had a little bit more or less, that would also work. Then I put in one cup of ketchup and I put in one tablespoon of chili powder and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Then it's a little bit of salt to taste. I am just going to stir all of that together and then when my meat and onions are cooked up and softened, you're just going to put that in here and stir all that together. Mm -hmm. 
and you do cook this in a covered like bean pot I have this Pyrex dish that has a lid and it always cooks up perfect in this but you're going to cook this at 400 degrees for one hour and you want to cook it covered now when you bring it out I like to leave mine sitting on the stove with the lid on for a little bit you can see how nice and bubbly it is now I had just a few potatoes left and I wanted to get those used up so I just sliced up some potatoes and I'm coating them with a little bit of olive oil and then I'm just going to season them up with some salt and pepper going to throw in just a little bit of onion powder and also some garlic powder these can cook alongside those cowboy beans you just have to be careful they don't take quite as long because I sliced mine of course thin because I wanted them to cook quicker and I did forget to spray my baking sheet before I put them on so they wanted to stick on me even <laughs> with all that oil on them so um, don't forget about spraying your pan I went back when I saw they were sticking and I kind of pushed them to one side and sprayed a little bit and they were fine you can see they turned out brown and just a little bit crispy on the outside and soft on the inside now as a side slash bread I'm making we just always called it fried cornbread some people call it hoe cakes and I am starting with one cup of cornmeal and then I add in a cup of flour a tablespoon of sugar and two teaspoons of baking powder and I am putting in just probably a little teaspoonful of salt now I'm going to crack in two eggs and three-fourths to a cup of milk you're just going to stir all of this in together and I have just made mine out of cornmeal before and just a little bit of flour but there is the consistency you want and if you have the baking powder I always suggest to put that in you're gonna see why here in just a second I've heated up some oil in my cast iron skillet and I want you to look how that baking powder makes these things rise they get so light and fluffy and if you've never had fried cornbread or as some people call them hoe cakes they are delicious and I like to make a whole run of them we may not eat all of this tonight but there's so many things that you can do with these you can eat them for dessert too just put you a little bit of butter and some pancake syrup on them that's always good now along with this meal tonight I just pulled out a steamable bag of corn cooked that in the microwave throw some butter and salt and pepper on that I also had a can of green beans I opened up same deal salt pepper a little bit of butter take the lid off those cowboy beans and stir them up they are still piping hot and delicious and that is just another tip I want to give you to stretch your food is you don't have to make such large amounts but if you have a number of sides like you can have a little taste of everything but then you have plenty of your main dish left over and just for reference I'm cooking for a family of four but you can definitely use any of these tips and customize them to the size and needs of your family and I had hoped to use these beans as a side the next night but we ate them for lunch the next day so I had to improvise there but we did have them left over but we ate them for lunch so the next night I was going to the freezer and I pulled out these Tyson boneless bites here boneless chicken bites to have a box of macaroni and cheese out of my pantry 
and then I had used all my potatoes but I had these hash browns in the freezer so we're gonna use those on the side and I'm just getting my skillet hot with oil I throw these in here just like I would a regular fried potato and I use salt pepper onion powder garlic powder that is what we like on our potatoes Once I get all the seasonings on, I do like to give them one little stir just to kind of get everything coated. Then I pretty much just let them sit there and I try not to touch them too much because, you know, we like ours to get crispy on the bottom. So once I turn them and I see that they're crisping up like that, I'll put that lid on them and let them get steamy and done on the inside and try just to turn them, you know, a time or two more. And like I said, I was not planning on making the potatoes this night. We were going to have the macaroni and cheese, the cowboy beans, some salad, and the chicken. But I had those potatoes and we had already eaten the beans, so I put it all together. And that is another tip. Having a salad every night, really, we should be eating more veggies than anything, right? But I like a salad. Everybody in my family does. And just a little bit of salad on the side every night. It's filling. It's good for you. And it stretches your groceries. You don't have to have so much meat when you have more sides. And sides are cheaper than meat for sure. And in my opinion, the salad is the star of every meal because I love toppings on my salad. Now we got up on a beautiful Saturday morning to this. It was still snowing <laughs> and I did not go outside and take any video because it was cold. I just took these pictures out of my front and my back doors <laughs> to show you guys, but it was gorgeous. And I'm always showing you this sausage in my grocery hauls. I like to bake mine in the oven. I line a pan with full and I bake it about 10 minutes on 375. Then I'll flip them, put them back in for another 10 or 15 minutes. I like the brownness right there. That is what I like and it makes it seem more like real from scratch sausage not pre-cooked now ryan was with us for the weekend and he is going to make the pancakes for us today and he's just fixing this up according to the directions and then we just had him add a little bit of vanilla into that to make it extra special and he is frying them up for us we had some just plain some he's putting chocolate chips in he did a great job on these. He is always so good to help. He enjoys being in the kitchen and always is a big help to me whenever he's here too. And look at those pancakes. He did a great job. So he's working pancakes and I'm working eggs and we just had a really good time and had a really good breakfast. Now we did some pancakes just plain. Some we put some little mini chocolate chips in. Then I remembered that banana bread that I made with the strawberries and chocolate chips. And I said, hey, I had just been to the store the day before. I had some fresh strawberries. So he cut up strawberries in some of them with the chocolate chips too. This was so delicious and such a treat. And it was nice to have him here to help me. Now, you know, I had saved my hoe cakes that we had some left over, and these, I'm just reheating them in the microwave, and I'm going to make a little breakfast sandwich out of them. I've put down a piece of cheese and just eggs. This was for Maddie. She did not want any sausage, but she said she would love to have an egg and cheese hoe cake sandwich. So, <laughs> that is what she had, and also, I think I told you, you can heat these up and, and put a little butter and syrup on them and they are every bit as good as a pancake if you don't have pancake batter or just um, bake them out of cornmeal without any flour if you're out of flour but that was a yummy little sandwich that she enjoyed along with her pancake this morning friends i thank you so much as always for being here this weekend 
I never take for granted the time that you set aside to spend with me. I hope that these meals have given you some inspiration or some ideas or just encouraged you to use what you have and let's make use of our leftovers now more than ever. We need to be conscious of what we're spending and what we are saving and making sure that we're just using everything so we can feed our families well and help those who need help. It was groceries this weekend and I'm trying to go two weeks again so I will have a grocery haul, a good one for you up on Wednesday and then I'll see you back here next Sunday for another What's for Dinner. I've already got some great ideas started in the works for it. I appreciate each one of you and as always I'm sending you love from my kitchen.